You look incredible. Well, thank you. I got all dressed up yes. for you in my tie dye to this represent is... my my hippie songs. That I've been sure. Doing. Oh yeah, yeah. You look amazing though. Well, thank it's been you. so gloomy here, but immediately you've brought sunshine into well, our lives. I know you love green because you're Irish. Yes. So I thought I'd kind of use that too. And how are you folks doing? Uh, they're fine. Yeah, these people. These people are happy now. Good. Too. I love now, now, do you me. like, um, I mean, this is a question I wanted to ask you. You know, you're from Smoky Mountains, Tennessee, yeah. and you, you're here in the city, New York City, and a lot of people say they love New York, but are you comfortable here? I mean, it's so different from the way you grew up. Well, I am now, yeah. but the first time I was ever here was, uh, I guess it was in the late 60s, early 70s, uh -huh. and I had just started making a name in country music, so of course all country girls want to go to the city, so my girlfriend Judy Ogle and I, well, we thought, well, we'll just go to New York. Mm -hmm. So we came up here, and we didn't have any money at that time. I was just beginning to make it. And so we checked in a hotel, and we've been friends since we were little, mm -hmm. so we just got one room, and uh, of course, I look cheaper then than I even do now. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, and Judy didn't look any better, so we checked in this hotel, and uh, they thought we were hookers. <laughs> so we went okay. out looking around in, uh, in, in the city, and we come back to our room, and they had our luggage out in the hall, and they had us locked out, because they thought we were turning tricks up there. So they, they, yeah. they, the management threw your luggage they, out? Out of the room? Out. And then we were waiting to get, we didn't have reservations back home, so we had our stuff. We asked if we could please at least leave it in the lobby. So we were out waiting around till time to leave, and we were walking down this, we didn't know where to go. And what's the name of that street? Was People it always ask me these questions. <laughs> you should know. Yeah, that, oh yeah. Well, I used to, yeah, 42nd Street. That's where we wound up accidentally, and this guy oh. thought that we were on the make. Right. And we was just trying to get home. We was just killing time. We didn't know where we were. So at that time, I did, that was back, I was a country girl from the mountains. I had right. a gun in my purse. What? And so <laughs> Wait a minute. I love how you no, just throw seriously. that in there. Well, of course I had a gun. Well, we came to New York. That was back then. And sure. You're not, country girl's not going to So New you had York a gun in your purse. I had a gun in my purse. And this guy wouldn't leave me alone because he was just sure I was playing hard to get and that I was really after it. Right. Or he, he definitely was after it. So I didn't know how to get him off me. So I just said, I just pulled my gun out and I just said, if you touch me one more time, I'm going to shoot you. And so he backed off. Well, actually, he did laugh and my friend Judy started laughing because she thought it was the funniest thing she'd ever seen. And so then he thought it was a joke. Anyway, it's a long story. When people and in New York pull a gun, they don't have, it doesn't usually end up in giggling, you know? <laughs> no, I know, but she yeah. just thought it was funny sure, that I did sure. that. And he thought then it really was a joke because he thought we were running in pairs. Th anyway, this is such a This is story. not the story I expected from you. It's so great. <laughs> I said, I'll turn you from a rooster to a hen with oh, one right. shot. Yeah, yeah. yeah so. you, that was from you. you had... Well, I think they based it on that sure. story that I told, so it doesn't matter. But I love New York now. I've been coming here. That's a hilarious story, Here's the other thing I've noticed about you. Uh, you've managed, you've had so much sort of surreal amount of success in your life, but you are, and you're not just way, this way in front of the camera. The times I've talked to you off camera, you're just a very humble person, very nice, real person. How do you keep yourself so grounded, despite the fact that you've had this enormous amount of, you know, success? Well, that's a very good question, and thank you for the thought. I, I love what I do, and I'm very grateful that I've made it. I don't know how many people really get to live to see their dreams come true, but mm -hmm. I have a good family, a good support system. One good example was uh, years ago, one of the things that I was most proud of, they put a statue, a bronze statue of me in the courthouse yard of our hometown. And I was so proud of that, and I was just bragging, bragging, just because I was proud, not being conceited, but I went on and on about it a little too much, and my dad said, uh, I said, Dad, don't you think that's great? He said, yes, I do. I am very, very proud of you. He said, because I know that to your fans, you may be some sort of an idol, but to the pigeons, you're just another outhouse. <laughs> so that kind of keeps it grounded for you. That's it. nice. They let you know, okay, this is yeah, good, but let's not yeah, get crazy. Exactly. Now, you have had to struggle with something that, for some reason, the tabloids, and this has been for a long time, they seized on you. They just love to write about you. And it's, it's, some of it's a byproduct of your popularity. I mean, it's a lot of it. They just want to have a Dolly Parton story. They write the craziest things they about do. you. They do. Lord, I've just had everything wrote about me. They are always talking about my boobs, you know. Not that I other don't know why. Don't, but, <laughs> but they say such, I mean, you know, they're not that big. It's just that I'm little and they're big in comparison to that. Well, they're That's oh, not true. Okay, they're, they're big. Yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> but what they usually 
say though, they tell all these freak stories about it that they are so big right. that I refuse to have them reduced and they are so big that they're ruining my life and my health and they're breaking my back. And they'll have things in the tablets where it says, I'm flat on my back, I can't move, uh, and I can't get up and down because of the boobs. You know, the, it's funny because they do write all these stories that Dolly can't even get out of bed because her they breasts do, are yeah. so, he you know, big. They do and say that. They well, do seem like they'd be heavy, though. <laughs> well, they are heavy. That's yeah. why I do so many Led Zeppelin songs. <laughs> Led Zeppelin's <laughs> kidding, I just do that That's not, no, that's all right. Hey, you're they, allowed to do those they jokes. They are yeah. heavy, but, but to be honest, if they get too heavy, I got some bongo stand. I just go red. <laughs> I was backstage.